Good evening, viewers. You are welcome to our online Winner Satellite Fellowship meeting here in the city of Nairobi, Kenya. And we trust God that as you fellowship with us tonight, God of heaven will bless you abundantly in Jesus' name. We'd like you to remember that the prophetic theme for the month of May is I am for signs and wonders. And that is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse number 18. And I pray that this month of May, God will make a wonder out of your life in the name of Jesus. And tonight, as we look at our teaching series, particularly for the WSF meetings all through the month, which is titled, Understanding Who We Are in Christ. I would like you to know that the teaching is targeted to help us understand, or rather, to steer up the supernaturality of Christ that is in us, to bring us to an awakening that we are not grasshopper, we are giant killers. And I'd like you to know that as you open up your heart to this word of God that will be coming your way, God will supernaturally enlarge your coast in the precious name of Jesus. Now the Bible is speaking in the book of Psalms 119, verse 144. The scripture says, it says, give me understanding and I shall live. Until understanding comes, you don't live well. You don't maximize what is available to you. And in Proverbs chapter 16, verse number 22, the Bible made us to understand that understanding is a well that springs up life to those that have it. So when you are a man or a woman of understanding, there is a continual springing up of resources, blessings to you. Why? Because you are able to access it by reason of understanding. So it's my prayer for you that is listening to me tonight that God will give you understanding of what we're teaching in the precious name of Jesus. So shall we pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for tonight the privilege that you have given us to gather as families to study your word together. We pray that you will grant each and every household understanding in the name of Jesus. And for everyone in particular listening this night, Lord, open thou our understanding that we may be able to comprehend what is the length and the breadth that is in you. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' precious name. The teaching series for the Winner's Satellite Fellowship meeting all through the month of May is titled, Understanding Who We Are in Redemption. Understanding Who We Are in Redemption. Why do we need to understand who we are in redemption? Number one, understand or know this, that a discovery of who we are in redemption, which is only available from the scriptures, is a very vital tool to our operating in the supernatural. A discovery of who we are in redemption, which is only available, take note of it, which is only available from the scriptures, is a vital tool to operating in the supernatural. You want to know who you really are by virtue of redemption. As a child of God, there is no book or human opinion, it doesn't matter how sincere they are, that can expressly, truthfully tell you who you are in Christ. You know why? 
It doesn't matter how sincere the opinions of men are. It's still limited. And the truth is this. People naturally have a mental picture of who you are and who they think you will become in life. They already put you in a box and programmed and concluded your story that you can't go beyond this point. Well, assessing you, looking at your potential, this is what can come out of you. But can I tell you this? They are limited. And whatever they are saying about you is not the total truth. It's not the absolute truth. Only the word of God can paint the absolute picture, the correct picture of who you are. Whatever you can see from the perfect law of liberty is what sets your life at liberty. Not the opinions of men. Whatever you can see from the perfect law of liberty concerning your health, concerning your finances, concerning your career, concerning your home, is what sets you at liberty. Now let's read from the book of Genesis chapter 13. Genesis chapter 13. I want to quickly show you a scripture there. Genesis chapter 13. Verse number 14, beginning. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Abram, after that Lot was separated from him, Lift up now thy eyes, and look from the place where thou art, northward, and southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, to thee will I give it, and to thy seed forever. How far you can see is what determines your possessions in life. To a believer, to a child of God, you may be asking yourself, okay, this is what God said to Abraham, what about me? Where is my north? Where is my south? Where is my east and west? Now, let me say to you, whatever you can see it from Genesis, that is your north, to Malachi, that is the south, to Matthew, that is the east, to Revelation, that is your west, whatever you can see as a divine provisions of God for your life, that is what you will get. So your well-being in life is not tied to the opinions of men. Who you are is not tied to the assessment of men. People can be prejudiced about who you are. But the correct picture of who you are is found in the scriptures, in the word of God. Because God has a picture about your life. Praise the Lord. So I'd like you to understand that a discovery of who we are in redemption is a vital tool to our operating in the supernatural. In John's Gospel, chapter 3, verse number 8, the Bible is speaking there, describing the man that is born of the Spirit. The Bible there describing, giving us a picture of who a believer is, one that is born of God, one that is born of the Spirit. He said that it's like the wind that blew it where it listed. And thou hearest the sound thereof, but cannot tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. He says, so is everyone that is born of the Spirit. That is the picture of who you are. Everyone that is born of the Spirit is a unique person. He is a different species. He has come into a new class of men. That's what the scripture is saying. Oh, no wonder the Bible said in Psalm 119 verse 18, He says, open thou my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. There are wondrous things, things that make life wonderful from the word of God. But until you can know them, until you know them and you can see them and you understand them, it doesn't make your life wonderful. 
But I pray for you tonight that as you come along in this teaching, the wondrous things that has been packaged of God for your life, they shall not only be revealed to you, you will practically experience them in the name of Jesus. Now hear this. I'd like you to hear this. What we can do begins with knowing what is in us. What you can do begins with knowing what is in you. In John's Gospel, chapter 1, John's Gospel, chapter 1, Gospel according to St. John, chapter 1, verse number 19. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to seek him. Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed and I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou that prophet? And he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What said thou of yourself? And hear the response of John the Baptist. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. He said, I am the voice, I'm a forerunner. So it is when you know who you are, what is in you, that is what determines what you can do in life. Praise the Lord. So the question now is this. Who exactly are you in redemption? As a believer, as a child of God, someone who has given his life to Jesus, who are you by virtue of redemption? Number one, I am. I am redeemed a seed of Abraham. You must know that. That you are redeemed a seed of Abraham as a blessing and not a burden. Listen, listen, listen. Your present position now is not your final placement in life. So don't allow the challenges of the moment to becloud your glorious tomorrow. Don't allow what you are going through now to confine you to a spot that you can't see something good about yourself. You are redeemed a seed of Abraham as a blessing and not a burden. You are not a body. That means to say you are a partaker of the Abrahamic order of blessing by inheritance. It doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter your antecedent. It doesn't matter who your parents are. The good news is this. Your background does not put your back on the ground. That's the truth. You are redeemed a seed of Abraham as a blessing and not a burden. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. Galatians chapter 3 verse 29. For ye, let me read from verse 26. For ye are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither bond nor free, there is neither male nor female, for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Verse 29. 
And if ye be Christ, that means if you are born again, he said, then ye are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, if ye be Christ. That means if you are born a seed of Abraham, you are part of the Abrahamic blessing. The covenant of blessings is upon your life. And in case you are wondering, what is this Abrahamic order of blessing? You find all of that in Genesis chapter 17, verse 6 and 7. Genesis chapter 22, verse 16 and 18. And when God said to Abraham, I will bless them that bless you. And I will curse them that curse you. That means I will be an enemy to your enemies. Now, when God says I will bless you, it means Abraham, I will empower you to succeed. So if you are a child of God, under the Abrahamic order of as a seed of Abraham, a partakers of the Abrahamic order of blessings, you are empowered to succeed. There is something inside of you. There is a spiritual dynamo inside of you that makes you, that enables you for success. He says, you are empowered to succeed. That's what it means to be blessed. To be blessed means you are fortunate. Don't ever look at yourself as being unfortunate. As a child of God, listen, you are fortunate. You are the most fortunate individual because you are connected to the most high God. You are fortunate. The God of all resources, the owner of the sheep upon the thousand hills. You are fortunate. You see, because your perspective about yourself matters in life, whether you win or you lose. God says you are blessed. You are under the Abrahamic order of blessing. You are a blessing, not just you, you are not just blessed, but you are also a blessing to your world. You are not a burden. And I'm exploring to you what it means to be blessed. Number one is to be empowered to succeed. Number two is to be fortunate. To be blessed also means you are favored, highly favored. So don't say I'm disfavored. I like you to understand, child of God, you are favored. You are on God's spotlight. You are favored. You are favored. I say you are favored. You are favored. You are favored. You are favored. And I see the favor of God speaking extensively all over the areas of your lives in Jesus' name. And listen, to be blessed also means to be enviable. So as a child of God, one that is redeemed as a seed of Abraham, listen, you are ordained to live an enviable life. You are ordained to live an enviable life. You are not to be pitied. The Bible says, when the Lord shall have built up Zion, it says Zion will comfort in his glory. So it doesn't matter what is happening around you. God is building you. He's taking you to the topmost top. See it that way. So don't look at yourself as being disadvantaged. Don't look at yourself as to be pitied. No, you are to be envied. That's the picture of God concerning your life in redemption. That is who you are in redemption. Listen to me. God is building you and he's taking you to the top. He's preparing you for the throne. He's getting you set for that big day. That big and glorious day. When your head will wear the crown. When the shoes of honor will be put on your feet. When the garment of honor, that royal garment will be worn around you. That's what God is preparing you for. So I'd like you to carry that mental picture about yourself. Number two, who are you in redemption? Hear this. By reason of redemption, you are redeemed to be free from curses. You are redeemed to be free from curses. That is the truth. Galatians chapter 3. You begin to read from verse 13. Galatians chapter 3 from verse 13. Hear what the scripture says. 
Galatians chapter 3, verse 13 to 14. He says, Christ hath redeemed us, not we redeem. He hath, he has already done it. When he hung on the cross, he paid the utmost price, the ultimate price rather, for your redemption from curses. He hath redeemed us from the curse of the law. He said, be made a curse for us, for it is written, Cause is everyone that angered on the tree. Why did he do that? He says that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ. That we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. You are redeemed from the curse of of the law. Whatever the curse are, you are redeemed from it. You are redeemed from it. Jesus paid the utmost price, the ultimate price. You are redeemed from it. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. Don't carry and stop carrying the consciousness of curses all around. No, you are not cursed. You are not cursed. You are not cursed. Jesus paid the price. The same blood that washed away your sin, that is the same blood that canceled the curses over your life. You are redeemed. You are redeemed from the curse of the law. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. I'd like you to be mindful of that. Hear what the Bible says in Numbers chapter 23, verse 20 down to 21. It says, Behold, I have received commandment to bless, and he had blessed, and I cannot reverse it. I have received the commandment to bless. He says, God has blessed. I cannot reverse it. You are not a cursed person. You are a blessed man. You are a blessed man. You are a blessed man. And when God blesses you, nobody can reverse it. Nobody can curse you. Why? He said, he had not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither seen perverseness in Israel. He said, that is the reason the Lord is God is with him, and the shout of a king is among them. God has blessed you, and no man can reverse it. That's, that tells you the power of the blessing. When a man is under the blessings of God, he cannot be caused. Any attempt to cause him, the cause goes back to the fellow invoking the cause. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am empowered to succeed. I am empowered to succeed. I am a fortunate man. I am a favored man. And I'm a man ordained to live an enviable life. That is who you are. You are not under the curse again. Stop the consciousness of this curse that you are carrying around. You don't need it. Redemption paid the price. God, will, Jesus rather, will not pay another price for the curse. He paid it once. That was why he said, it is finished. Isaiah 65, verse number 8, the Bible said, destroy it not for a blessing in it. When a man is under the blessing, he becomes indestructible by curses. Curses can penetrate him. It may be affecting other members of his family, but as for him, because he's under the blessing, he's exempted. Blessing exempts you from curses. Listen to me, friends. I would like you to go after blessings. Blessing is the antidote to causes. Blessings is the antidote to causes. Because when you are blessed, when you are under the blessings of God, when the good hand of the Lord that makes a man to succeed, to live an enviable and a fortunate and a prosperous life, when the good hand of the Lord is upon you, Listen to me, there is no evil of curses that can penetrate your arena. I am blessed. I am blessed. I like you to be conscious of the blessing. As a child of God, I am blessed. I am blessed. I may be walking through the valley of the shadow of death. I am coming out because I'm a blessed man. The blessing for be stagnation. The blessing for be sorrow. The blessings for be shame. The blessing for be failure. I am blessed. And I'm going forward. I am blessed. 
I am blessed. That is what redemption has done. And that is who you are in redemption. You have been redeemed from the curse of the law. Why? Because Jesus paid the price. Whether it is, listen to me. Let's look at a clear example of the man Esau. The clear example of the man Esau. The Bible said in Hebrews chapter 12, you begin to read from verse 15 down to 17. Hebrews chapter 12. Ordinarily Esau was supposed to be a carrier of the blessing, but he lost it. And the Bible said he sought it diligently with tears, but he could not find it. It was too late for him. It was too late. He never realized the value of the blessing. That's why I'm emphasizing this so that you will realize the value of the blessing that God has blessed you with. Riches does not equal blessing, but it is blessing that guarantees riches. That's why the Bible says it is the blessings of the Lord that make it rich. So as long as you are under the blessing, your prosperity is guaranteed. But if you find a man that has gathered wealth, resources, and is outside of the blessing, he won't go far. Whatever he has gathered will become the undoing of his life. Go after the blessing. Whether it is the blessing that comes by pro proclamation of the priest, or what we call the prophetic blessing, or it is the blessing of your parents, your earthly parents, Please go after it. Seek the, the blessings of your parents. Seek the blessing of your spiritual father. Seek the blessing of authority figures over you that you may do well. The reason why many people are striving and struggling and nothing seems to be working is because they have been disconnected from the blessing. It may even be the blessing of their parents. They no longer pay value to their parent. Their parent is just, well, somebody somewhere, some out there, old school man. He didn't send me to school. He didn't do anything about my life. Yes, he may not have done that, but he begat you. You want it to be well with you on the earth, seek his goodwill, seek his blessing. You say, well, my parents are not born again. Yes, he may not be born again, but he carries within him what it takes to make your life do well. Seek his blessing. Blessing constructs destinies. Why causes destroys destiny. That's why you must seek the blessing. When a man is so blessed, when a man comes under the blessings of God that way, or of authority figures, look, you will just be enjoying favor. When the goodwill of your master is towards you, it advances your life. It advances your destiny. But when his heart is not wishing you well, how do you go forward in that place of work? Listen, friend, humble yourself and seek blessing. Blessings are provoked. It doesn't just come like that. Blessings are provoked. And hear me, in case you are not born again, one of the first steps you need to take to provoke the blessings of God over your life is to be born again. Is to be born again. Every other form of human blessings are limited to the extent to which they can advance a man's life. But when you are under the blessings of God, you enter into the realm of the unlimitedness. That's why you need to connect to the blessings of God via redemption, via salvation. So wherever you are, you want to give your life to Jesus. I'd like to pray with you because I wouldn't, like to, I wouldn't want to close this broadcast without leading you to Jesus, without bringing you into the blessings of the covenant of redemption. Bow your heads and say after me, Lord Jesus, I come to you tonight as a sinner. And I ask that you have mercy on me. I can't go find life without you. I've walked around in confusions and in darkness. But Jesus, tonight I cry out unto you. Have mercy on me. Forgive me my sins. Come into my life and be my Lord and my Savior. 
Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Praise God. Now, before I pray with you, I'd like to read a testimony that came in this morning to you. The testimony is titled, Supernatural Restoration After Listening to Online Teaching. Hear what the testifier said. He said, I'm born again and baptized in this church. That is Winners Chapel, Nairobi. But due to spiritual battles, I stopped coming to church for some time. But after watching online teachings of Pastor Emmanuel, Olumiwa Emmanuel, a thought came to me to call one of the sisters who sings in the choir, who encouraged me to engage in kingdom advancement prayers. And she was sending the prayers to me through WhatsApp. After engaging fervently for one week, the God of wonders visited me. He said, I was desperately employed for 10,000 shillings, that's about $100, after losing my job due to coronavirus pandemic. But to my surprise, things changed dramatically. And I now earn 30,000 shillings, three times of what I used to earn. I give God all the glory. The testifies Brother Francis K. Now, this is what God has done. You have heard the teachings tonight. I'd like you to bring your faith on the line. The God who turned the story around, that same God is about to visit you. I'd like you to see yourself in the reality of who God says you are by reason of redemption. That you are a blessed man. You have been brought into the Abrahamic order of blessing. You are an enviable man. You are a prosperous man. You are a fortunate man. And I pray for you today that the blessings that God has ordained for you, that will make your life to be enviable, that will show true favors upon your life. I command the release of that blessings in the name of Jesus. Whatever you have long waited for, the Lord, these are the desires of my heart. I pray for you today by the apostolic grace over this commission, I decree that that blessing before the end of this month, the same desires become your testimonies in the name of Jesus. The Bible says God is able to do exceeding abundantly and above all that we ask or think according to his own power that is at work. I invoke the power of the God of miracles to come upon your life, step into your situation, turn your challenges to testimonies in the name of Jesus. And I pray for you today as I proclaim the blessings upon your life, whatever represent curses, I pray today that the mercy of God will speak for you. Whatever initiated that curse, let the message of God speak for you. Let the blood of Jesus cancel the curse. Let the blessing flow upon your life and say to you in your own estate, in the name of Jesus, whatever is delaying your marital destiny, your marital fulfillment, I pray for you today. Every strange hand of the enemy that is trying to scatter every step towards marital fulfillment. In the name of Jesus, I cut that hand of the enemies away. In the name of Jesus. And by the finger of God, I bring your spouse to you. I connect you divinely with your spouse. And I say, be blessed of God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God, in Jesus' name. I'd like you to look at the numbers being rolled on the screen. We'd like you to call us, share your testimony with us, either through the mail or give us a call directly. Let us know God has done something new, something great, something amazing in your life. Let us know you are born again by reason of the teachings you have heard. 
And we're going to celebrate God with you and help walk with you the walk of faith till you see Jesus at last. Be blessed in Jesus' name until we come your way again. Peace.